Network, Sinking Media in association with Box Row. We've got the man behind the zone. Massive fight. How excited are you guys as a brand and as a channel to stage this fight? Really excited. And I think, as I said up there, I think there aren't many opportunities that boxing presents to uh, cut through and reach a, a new audience and a broader audience than traditional boxing fans. And this is definitely one of those moments. Um, so everyone at the zone is very focused on using the next two months to, to maximise the opportunity and reach as many fans and sports fans as possible so that come April the 30th in the UK, Ireland and the US, the audience is as big as it possibly can be. Obviously, women's boxing is still kind of new. Uh, how much of a risk was it as a, as a company like financially to you know, throw your money at it and, and roll the dice and you know, try and build it? Uh, look, we, we've been in boxing, in women's boxing, since we, we, we launched as own as a boxing platform. We've also been investing as a, a company more broadly. Uh, originally, our, our parent company, Perform Group, before the zone, heavily invested in women's tennis for, for 10 years, and we're midway through that, that deal right now. So we've believed and invested in women's sport for a long time. We've been investing in women's boxing for as long as we've been investing in boxing, and we've seen gradual uptick in interest, obviously led by... Matchroom's sort of roster of, of leading uh, women's fighters, Katie Taylor being the biggest name. Jake Paul attaching himself to Amanda Serrano obviously adds a new flavour to it, which was excellent. And I think, you know, those are just some of the ingredients that mean that we're, we're very, very confident that our investment will be a good one. So uh, if we get it right in the next couple of months, we've got a nice amount of time to get it right. Um, yeah, the money will take care of itself. I'm not concerned about that. And obviously, you're quite a while into this new deal with, with Matchroom. How happy are we with the numbers that you've generated now compared to what your projections might have been when you started off? Yeah, look, I mean, COVID was a, a major banana skin as we really got our boxing business going. So we have to navigate that. Candidly, we made some mistakes when we first came into boxing. I think boxing's a, a tough old business to, to get your head around, and we're obviously a sports broadcasting business more broadly. So we had to learn as we went. But I think the last couple of years, we've we've really sort of um, hone those learnings and our boxing business financially and from a, you know, every metric we look at is in the healthiest place it's ever been in so um, I'm really excited about that as are the rest of our management team and uh, yeah that allows us to be more confident in making investments in different countries of the world in different fights in bigger fights uh, in different kinds of fights too so um, yeah well, our boxing business is in a great shape. Uh, sometimes to make the big fights, you've got to work with different promoters. Is that something the zone are looking at? Because there's loads of like small hold promoters in the UK, and I'm guessing there's loads in the USA as well. Is that something you're considering? Yeah, we always we're door open for business, right? Anyone can contact us and present opportunities. But look, I think there is value in simplicity, and we work with two primarily two very very strong um, promotional partners. Obviously, Matchroom have a, a base here in the UK. Eddie very keen to grow the business internationally. He's increasingly adept at promoting in the US. Golden Boy on the west coast of the States, in particular reaching Mexican-American and Hispanic uh, fans and with their roster of Mexican-American and uh, Hispanic fighters. It's a nice sort of balance those two uh, give us. And what it does give us ultimately is a week in, week out schedule that appeals to an increasingly large number of subscribers. And we're using fights like this one to get new people in. When we get new people in, we're pretty good at keeping them because the content we serve them, both live fights and on-demand on content, original programming, um, is very, very strong. And we've built that up very, very nicely, even through the challenges of COVID. So that, all, all of that means that our, bit, our boxing business is very strong. And yeah, that's what I'm paid to build. So I'm happy about that. Talking numbers, obviously, the whole business is a numbers game. So uh, how disappointed was it to lose out the Tyson Fury, Dillian White uh, show? Well, not disappointing, because we didn't really expect to get it in the first place. I think Eddie's been on record in the last week or so talking about why um, why we weren't particularly confident going into that purse bid. We clearly put down a big number. If we'd won, it would have been the biggest purse bid win of all time. But there's many, many fights in the heavyweight mix that could, that could be made. Um, I'm glad, even though we haven't got it, that Fury White is happening because it means that fights like that, that we can get our hands on, will start happening. It's true of the lightweights, everything around George Combosis and Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. I think Katie or, or Amanda said it up there on stage. Women's boxing is better at making big fights than men's boxing. So actually, the rest of the sport could learn from the two ladies and their promoters up here today. Let's just get the bullshit out of the way and let's focus on making big fights. Fury and White have done it. Um, AJ's there, Usyk's there, uh, Derek Chisora's there. There's many different uh, fights to be made uh, in, in that mix at that level. Um, and we're confident and hopeful we can uh, you know, be broadcasting many of those in the next couple of years.
I can imagine you're obviously fresh and ready to try and get the big names. And the guys that drive the subscribers like Canelo and obviously potentially Fury, how much pressure is there on Eddie to deliver Canelo's next fight to the zone? There's always pressure on Eddie, and I'm always very happy to lump more pressure on Eddie because uh, he's a kind of guy that lives for pressure. Look, we've got a great relationship with Matchroom. I think that relationship, yeah, it's matey and we're, we're, we're friendly, but ultimately it's formed on a, a bond of respect. They know what we're going to push them for, and they... Uh, push us back and we know what they're going to push us back on um, this fight is an example when we get that right it, it's excellent we push them to bring us big fights when they bring them to us we invest in them not only in the rights fee to pay the fighters but in the marketing and everything around it so um, yeah it's a healthy respectful relationship that occasionally requires a bit of a push but that's what a good working relationship is all about Last question, John, before I let you go. If you did win the, uh, the Percy at 30 odd million for Fury, what, do you think as a business you would have recovered that money back? Yeah, I would have done. We would have done because the the interest in that fight is is big. I think, being honest, knowing what I know about the modelling of boxing events and the forecasting of them, I think 41 is probably a push. Um, but hey, that's not my business. That's that's for them to to push. And who knows what they'll actually end up paying the guys for it um, based on you know how these things work. They may have agreed stuff before the purse bid. But uh, look, we don't put numbers down unless we're confident we can make uh, you know a healthy return on it, a fair return. Um, I think we're focused on delivering consumer value and we've done that consistently over the last four years in boxing. John, thank you so much and appreciate your time. Nice to meet you, mate. Thanks.